Hi, it's Matt. Welcome to Fairweather Foundry. Today we're going to talk about how my furnace works. We're not going to be firing it up in this video. I'll save that for another video because that's a whole process. Uh, I'm just going to go through all the parts and uh, explain how it works. So one thing I want to add is that a large number of people misuse the words forge and foundry. Okay, A foundry is something that melts metal that you use to do metal casting. So this is a foundry, okay, or a furnace. A forge is used when you do blacksmithing, okay? It's, it's, it's made differently and it's made to heat parts that you can blacksmith and you can put back in. It's not this whole contraption. It's simpler than this, um, but they're different. Forge and foundry are different. So this is the actual furnace. I hope you can see with the light. Um, made, you know, just out of steel and refractory cement. So let me just do a walk around here. You got this foot pedal. So by the way, this furnace was made using the book um, by Colin Peck called, I think it's called The Artful Bodger's Guide to Metal Casting. Uh, has the best design for furnaces. Like, he, know, he's, he knows, this guy knows. So I followed his book. So you have your foot pedal down here that has a lever in the back, pushes up the lid, you turn it to the side, and then um, what we got, and this is kind of, I mean, this has been through some hard times here. Um, first, we have a layer of refractory cement around here. This is 3000 grade refractory cement because um, I want it to be able to melt iron, uh, cast iron. Um, and then after this refractory layer, we have another layer of insulation right here, which is filled with vermiculite insulation and packed down. And then the top has a, a fire clay, uh, you know, cap. And then on the cap is this gasket here, and this is just some um, fiberglass rope. And that keeps the flames from coming out from underneath of the, uh, of the lid right there. Um, now the way it works is you have your you know inlet assembly or blower assembly which I'm going to talk about in a second coming in that's going to shoot the flames in and it comes in tangentially to the furnace so uh, what that causes what that does is it causes the flame to twirl around here and then come out the exhaust hole at the top now some of that fire comes out the hole right here this is a preheater hole and um, this is very important for getting the furnace really hot, really quickly, okay? Um, I can melt a cylinder head in like 10 minutes. It'll be all liquid because of this, of this guy, right? So the fire comes out, it goes through here, and I'll take this out. So I'm gonna go over the blower in a second. Um, so that's pretty much the furnace aspect of it. It also has, let me close this, it also has a pour hole out here, like if I melt a big cylinder head and I don't have a big enough crucible to fit it in, um, I just plug this up with like a steel rod and when, it, when it's all melted I take it out and tip the furnace over and uh, it can, the, the metal comes out here. So let's talk about the blower assembly, okay? So this is an old vacuum cleaner, alright? and. Um, it's, it's an old one made of die casted aluminum like it's sturdy it outputs a lot of air really quickly so I got this um, I think this is a jacuzzi pipe this is in like the pool section of Home Depot this was expensive by the way hooked it up to the output and this goes into the blower which is just PVC you got a ball valve he here to adjust the airflow um, then the air comes in here and let's pull this out now this is the, the tip that goes into, this is the business end, okay? So, look in the front, you see this middle part, that's where the oil, this furnace uses used, used oil. The oil comes out of here, alright? And when the air passes through, it'll suck this out using the Venturi effect, kind of like how carburetors work. Um, so the more air flows through here, the more suction, and, and it helps atomize the air better. So. Um, this part is obviously metal because it gets really hot 
It doesn't matter that the, uh, the back side is PVC because that does not get hot at all. Now, the preheater, which I mentioned earlier, goes through this little section here, of the flattened pipe that I welded in. Um, and then it comes out the other side. There's a hole there. And then if you look in, well, you probably can't see, but there are ports on this pipe that goes through that let the flame out into the air. And what that does is it preheats the air and the oil coming in. And that helps the oil atomize better, mist, which makes it burn hotter. So it burns hotter and then, the, and then that hotter flame comes out the preheater hole and hits the air again, making it burn even hotter. And it's kind of like a, a feedback loop. And it gets really hot really, qu really quick. Um, we got some exhaust shielding here that we need to weld back up because it's, it's been used a whole lot. Um, that tube comes out here and goes to this assembly here, which is this is like a little needle valve that I never use. Um, and that's pretty much the blower. This is the fuel line, which goes up to the fuel tank, which I'll talk about next. So this is the fuel tank. Again, I welded it up. And um, uh, it holds about three gallons, I think, of used motor oil. And uh, the one thing I found is that it's annoying to filter the oil before you put it in. It takes a long time. So I actually um, built in, this is, the oil comes out of here, this is a little ball valve. Uh, comes into this steel block here that I made um, and mounted an oil filter on. That way, and it's this is made such that the oil goes through the oil filter, gets filtered, and then comes out here and goes to the assembly. Um, I made a little rack here too to mount the blower on so I can mount it just like that when it's not in use. So in the top here, um, this just opens up and uh, well, I'm not going to open it up because it's kind of annoying, but this is where you pour your oil in and this fills this up. Now recently I added a pressurization system, right? So there's a little pressure regulator right here. You hook up compressed air to this. And I only put about 5 PSI in. The most I ever went to was like 8, okay? Because this starts to become a safety concern because this, you know, not 100% sure how much pressure these welds can take, okay? Um, but this, what this does is that, so normally, if you don't have this pressure system, you have to gravity feed your oil, okay? Because it, it needs a propulsion mechanism to get shot into the blower. And the higher you put this tank, the more the, the more pressure the oil comes in at, and it, the hotter it burns, um, and also the more fuel it uses. But um, so I didn't want to make this crazy big, tall, you know, fuel tank. So I just plugged this in and pressurized the whole tank just to a couple psi, and that what that does is that simulates me moving it up and making it bigger, so I can keep it this small structure. And um, and it burns, I mean guys, it burns way hotter with this pressure in here. Like it, it's, like I said, I can melt a whole head in like 10 minutes or less. I get the aluminum gets so hot that it go, it turns orange. Um, I've melted cast iron, I've only done that once so far. But it really, really works to have this pressure system in it. Like it's, it, combine that with this high output vacuum and you're, you're talking hot. Thought I'd take a minute to go over the crucible a little bit. Um, I just went to the scrap yard and found some, you know, this was an accumulator actually off of an industrial air conditioning system. And I cut it and put some legs on it and made this little crucible. Um, this little crucible holder, it works really well. Um, it hooks onto the, the little pins here. And then um, I have this second little guy here that I use to pour it, just like that, and it pours out. Um, this works really well. I use the, I only use this crucible for aluminum casting. It would not be suitable for iron casting, uh, but I have another crucible for iron casting that's made of uh, graphite. That is not downstairs at the moment, so you'll have to see that when I do some iron casting later. Alright, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. If you can thumbs up the video, subscribe. I would like that a lot. Um, 
I'm going to make a video pretty soon showing me firing up the furnace and the, the procedures and how to do that um, so I can link back for all my other casting videos. Thanks for watching again. See you later.